Hey everybody, Jason here again with the gd and Basics video question line. And today's topic is designing for coaxial holes. Today's question is, I have two holes and I want to push a rod through them. What gd and should I use? We have true position, but when we inspect it, every single one of our parts fail. But I can still slide a mock rod through both of the holes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the example drawing that was sent to us to analyze here. And we can see a simple weldment. The simple weldment is establishing this hole on the left as datum feature B. Now, we can't necessarily attach the datum feature symbol directly to the axis like we see here, but the intention is uh, understood that we can apply the datum axis to this hole. So the axis of that hole is established as datum axis B. And then we're controlling the position of this hole over here with respect to that axis. And we know that because we've referenced datum feature B in this feature control frame. And we have a diametric tolerance zone of eight thousandths. So that means if we have the hole on the left, this hole right here, represented over here, we can see that hole can actually shrink in size as well, right? The component level drawing will have some sort of size tolerance for that hole. So if we're gonna consider the worst case assembly or the worst case assembly to try and get a rod through both of these holes, if this hole shrank like we just saw, that would also reduce the clearance between the two holes to get a rod through it. So let's consider the worst case scenario. This hole, the datum feature, is at its smallest diameter. And we know that it's going to create a datum axis. And the tolerance zone for the other hole is diametric in nature. It's 8 thousandths diameter. And it's going to be centered on the datum axis. So what that means is if the hole on the left deviates in position, or our datum feature deviates in position, obviously the axis will go with it but the tolerance zone will go with it as well, making sure that the two holes stay coaxial. And we're controlling the location of that datum feature other ways, and we can see that we have size dimensions and all sorts of things controlling the location. Now, we could easily control the location of the datum feature back to the rest of our assembly by identifying other datum features and controlling the position of this hole as well. It's just a different method of controlling coaxiality. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So if the datum feature hole does move, the axis goes with it, the tolerance zone for the other hole comes along with it as well. And we can inspect that other hole and make sure its axis is inside that tolerance zone. And what we can see is that hole can also deviate in size and shrink. And if it shrinks, that's the worst case assembly condition. But we also know that it can deviate in location, decreasing the odds of getting a shaft through both of these holes. But it can only move in so much position. And in fact, if we consider all of these positions simultaneously in all directions, we can see that this creates a singular boundary that we can identify. That boundary is called the inner boundary for that feature. And we know that this inner boundary is going to be the boundary that the feature will never cross, no matter what. This hole can't get any smaller and it can't deviate any more in position. And we can actually calculate this boundary rather easily. We can calculate it by simply subtracting the maximum material condition or the smallest diameter, and we can subtract the position or the geometric tolerance for that feature. So we can see that if we assume these holes are, let's say, 0.625, again, I wasn't given this clarity on the drawing, but we can assume these holes are maybe 0.625 plus or minus something like 0 0.010. Well, we know the smallest diameter of that hole would be then 615. And if we subtract the diametric tolerance, this value from here to here, from that smaller diameter, we would subtract 0 0.008, resulting in a 0 0.607 diameter for this green zone. The inner boundary's diameter is 607. Now we can't measure at 607, but we know the combined size and deviation and position will leave a boundary that we won't cross of 0 0.607 for either of these holes. That means that if we're trying to get a shaft through both of those holes simultaneously, the largest diameter shaft, assuming perfectly straight shaft, that we can allow to have and still assemble in these two holes is 0 0.607. As long as it's smaller than that, we're also guaranteeing it's going to fit. But if it's bigger than 607, maybe like 608, as far as the diameter on the shaft, we can't guarantee that it'll fit there might be interference if there's a small hole with all of the deviation we are allowing. So as far as the question goes, why might you be able to inspect it every time in fail position, but still get the mock rod through? Well, what might be happening is 
you might be measuring at a 10 thousandths diametric deviation. In other words, the axis of the hole that you measured was outside the 8 thousandths diameter tolerance. So you'd fail the position. But what you might notice is that if you can allow, maybe your shaft only is uh, a max diameter of 0 0.600, you're saying that there's always going to be 7 thousandths of clearance based on these tolerances. And so if you deviated a little bit of outside the uh, position tolerance zone, you might still have enough clearance to make that shaft, that mock shaft, assemble in these holes. So really what probably is happening here is this value is just too tight. And we can design that value. We can design the exact value that we need in this situation. If we know the worst case diameter, let's say our worst case diameter for the shaft is 0.600 what would we design the position tolerance to to ensure a zero clearance fit in the worst case scenario but allow the most amount of position? So let's ignore 0 0.008. We don't know that value. We're trying to calculate that value. But we know if we subtract 615 from that value, we should get 0 0.600 because that's the worst case shaft. That is the boundary we want to use up entirely. So the difference between this value and this value is simply 0 0.015. So if the scenario is our MMC of our clearance hole is 0 0.615 from our size dimensions, and we know that the worst case MMC of our shaft is 600, we can calculate the actual position tolerance needed for a zero clearance fit in the worst case scenario. So hopefully that helps kind of clarify some things. Now, there are definitely alternatives, as I mentioned. You could identify these features up here as datum features that control the six degrees of freedom. And then you can control the position of this hole and the position of this hole as well to the same datum reference frame. And now we are also controlling coaxiality back to the same datum references. Obviously, these would go away and become basic dimensions. So hopefully this adds some clarity to the question and the design decisions that we have to go through when we're trying to figure out what geometric tolerances to apply and how much to apply to them. So thanks for submitting and hope this helps. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles